Hello everyone, I am Be Better Gamer, and welcome to my first episode, uh, my first Let's Play episode of WCW NWO Revenge. I'm jumping into the option menu right there, so you can see I will be playing a championship mode uh, on hard. I'm going to be going after the U.S. heavyweight title, uh, who currently is held by uh, Kurt Henning. And the belt is silver because I apparently pressed start when the NWO were talking in the uh, intro video. But none other than the icon Sting, the franchise of WCW. Um, it's no coincidence that I'm picking Sting for obvious reasons. You know, he's going to be headlining uh, WrestleMania with Triple H. Uh, so I'm very excited to that. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do these Let's Play videos. Um, if you haven't seen any of my videos before, welcome. Thank you for watching. Uh, I've only recently started doing Let's Plays. I started with um, WWF No Mercy. I did the WWF No Mercy um, Light Heavyweight Championship and the European Championship. I have a bunch of those Let's Play videos up. Also some like singular episodes talking about like what was going on like during the Royal Rumble and stuff like that. Then I recently I've been doing my Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 Let's Play series. So check that out. If you don't know what Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 is, I have an introduction to Virtual Pro Wrestling 2. And actually the first few videos I started loading onto YouTube were um, just straight WCW vs um, NWO Revenge playthroughs. So this is my first Let's Play where I'm actually having commentary, but I have a whole bunch of championship runs. Um, you know, including Kurt Henning winning it. I also have like, you know, I'm fighting Hulk Hogan right now in the first match of the U.S. Heavyweight title run. And I actually did a playthrough of Hulk Hogan uh, for the world title. And I actually, and I also did a Sting playthrough of the world title. None of my WCW NWO Revenge uh, playthroughs have commentary. So I'm looking to fix that. You know, I didn't have this really good mic. Uh, when I started doing that, I also didn't have the time to do the Let's Plays, you know, to do the commentary. I was still trying to figure it all out, get my YouTube channel up and running. So those were just like kind of like a test run, if you will. Very long, extensive test run of what I really wanted to do. So I'm glad to be back playing Revenge. I'm um, very excited about this run because I'm talking about Sting. Sting was one of my favorite WCW wrestlers. Um, I, was, I was deeply affected by Hulk Hogan's heel turn uh, <laughs> and it's it's fitting that we're playing that we're starting things off right off the bat you know the one thing about WCW NW Revenge you know the the championship paths aren't like how um, you know in, in, in No Mercy or Road or WrestleMania 2000 or even Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 you know in those games they tried to really more so follow the storylines of like the WWF, you know, WrestleMania 2000, you had the road to WrestleMania, which is basically like you work your way up through the ranks, uh, wrestling on Monday Night Raw and Sunday Night Heat, and then you wrestle at the pay-per-views, wrestle for the different titles to eventually get to WrestleMania. Um, no Mercy, they have um, sort of a similar concept, but a bunch of different branching um, championship paths where you can go for the belt as a contender or as already the champion. And each path is, you know, a different storyline. And, you know, you, it's kind of like a choose your own adventure. Like if you win a match, you'll go a certain route. If you lose a match, you go a certain route. Um, so I'm definitely going to do a lot of those Let's Plays about, you know, the No Mercy Championship path. But Revenge, Revenge, um, it was just like you pick a title, you pick one of the WCW titles, and then you just play, you know, eight eight matches, I believe, eight or nine matches, I always forget. Even though I've done it like a hundred times, I always forget how many matches you play. <laughs> but it's like eight or nine matches, and then you fight uh, the champion. When, when you first get the game, um, you only have the Cruiserweight Tag Team and... Uh, world heavyweight title of it. No, you have the cruiserweight tag team, the U.S. heavyweight title available to you, and then you can unlock the TV title and the world heavyweight title, and then you unlock and and, and you unlock also hidden characters for each one. Um, Kurt Henning is actually a hidden character, so I actually unlocked him, and then I won it again with him. Uh, and then one of my playthroughs you can see of me playing as Kurt Henning, and I'll do a let's play. I'll do a let's play of all the people that I already did playthroughs of. But I wanted to start with Sting because Sting, um, I mean, he's the most relevant WCW guy right now. If you think about it, 
you know, and I go for the Scorpion Death Drop, Hulk Hogan kicks out. <laughs> and I guess I, I should talk right away about WCW NW Revenge. So it's a little broken. <laughs> At least I think it's a little broken. I mean, obviously I've been working on Hulk Hogan the whole match. If this was WrestleMania 2000 or... Um, what's the other one? <laughs> no Mercy. Um, or even Virtual Pro Wrestling 2, the match would have been won. But if you notice, um, he kicked out. He kicked out right away. He also got out right away after I did the first Scorpion Death Drop. I don't know why that happens. That happens a lot. Sometimes when you have a finisher, and I notice it happens with certain wrestlers. It happens a lot when you play as DDP. Um, the computer doesn't stay down all the time when you hit one of your specials. So it guarantee, you know, means, you, all right, you got to pull off your other special. Also, the meter is very, you know, matters a lot in this game. And if you yourself don't have a high spirit meter, it's going to affect how your chances are in pinning the opponent. So since I went for the pin as my meter was failing from the special, um, we were both pretty much at the same even meter. And Hulk Hogan was obviously going to kick out. You'll see that happen all the time. If your meter's green and their meter's green, they're gonna kick out. It's like 90% of the time it happens. And now Hulk Hogan's already at orange. He's got what I call a comeback special. Because he kicked out of that, you know, finishing move, two finishing moves, actually. Um, now he's got a little bit of the advantage. His meter is gonna grow much faster than I. Um, also in WCW NW Revenge, when you strike the opponent, their meter goes up as well as your meter goes up. They change that later on. Um, you know, if you do any of the weak A grapples, the weak A grapples will raise your opponent's meter as well as yours. So that could actually be a disadvantage, especially when the computer has a comeback spe special. Because if I'm trying to swing the momentum back my way, I have to be very careful because even regular striking moves are going to give them a comeback special. They're much more like, you know, as you saw right there, he countered my um, small package attempt. Um, it's much easier for them to counter specials. Now, the one saving grace, you know, with playing with someone like Sting is I got that Scorpion Deathlock ready to go at any moment. And here, right, as you can see, perfect positioning. I've been working on his leg. Hogan's been holding his, le his leg. He's going to tap out. I didn't back down. From his comeback special, I didn't back down. You know, he was about to get a, a special, but I was able to seize the opportunity and go after the Scorpion Deathlock and make Hulk Hogan tap like how it should be when you're playing as Sting. <laughs> but this is uh, Sting actually never fought Hollywood Hulk Hogan in like his Stinger face paint. He only, um, they, you know, they had the big blowout feud when Sting was rocking the Crow gimmick. But um, I'll talk about a lot of Sting's world heavyweight, you know, title conquests and his feud with the NWO and Hogan when I do my Sting world heavyweight title run. I know I did one, I did a playthrough of it, but, you know, this video I want to talk about, you know, the, the revenge gameplay. Um, a lot, there's a lot of instances, a lot of these matches where I want to highlight some of the things about uh, this game that makes it different from No Mercy and... Um, you know, Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 and, and WrestleMania 2000, but but also in my other Let's Play videos when I do championship runs, I like to talk about what the wrestler I'm playing as, like their relationship with the title. Like I'm not just going to pick someone, you know, I'm not going to pick, you know, the giant for the U.S. heavyweight title, even though he never really had a U.S. heavyweight title. Although, wait, I think he, he was the U.S. heavyweight title at one point. Okay, I'm not going to pick Raven as, for a world heavyweight title run, because um, he never was the WCW World Heavyweight Champion. I mean, he was the ECW Heavyweight Champion, but unfortunately, ECW uh, never got a wrestling game developed by AKI. It would have been super sweet if they did. Oh, man, that would have been awesome. But ECW couldn't afford uh, paying for that license. Um, so anyway, yeah, Sting and Raven. This is a pretty cool match because considering, you know, Sting would later go on to wrestle for NWA. TNA, I should say, um, you know, Impact Wrestling, and I believe Raven was around the time that Sting was there. Uh, Sting was there for a long time, but you know, let's talk about let's talk about Sting. Why did I choose Sting in the Stinger face plane? He he's out in WWE right now, you know, going to WrestleMania, wrestling Triple H, but he's rocking the Crow gimmick, and a lot of a lot of people might remember him as being just a Crow Sting, 
you know, in the rafters, um, all black, black trench trench coat, white face paint, you know, coming down from the from the rafters, you know, um, lurking in the shadows, not saying a word. The thing I remember growing up was the surf the surf dude's thing, you know, like the he used to come out colorful face paint, colorful tights, happy, smiling all the time, ready to go. You know, his feuds with Flair, his feuds with, with Vader, his matches with Steamboat. Um, I remember a lot of that stuff. Um, there, I, there used to be an old, um, I think what got me kind of into old WCW wrestling, because I was always, I, I'm pretty sure my first wrestling experience was, you know, early WWF, you know, Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, Macho Man, all that stuff, you know, Saturday Night Main Event all that jazz but i think my first introduction to wcw wrestling was it was a nes um wcw wrestling game i think it was like called fall brawl or something like that and sting was on the cover i believe and vader was on the cover and i was that exposed me like oh there's a whole nother wrestling promotion and it was completely different completely different from the wwf but i gravitated to a lot of guys like sting like vader because they, to me, as a kid, even as, you know, they, they fit that mold of, of what these wrestlers were, you know, these larger-than-life athletes. And, you know, Sting was definitely one of those guys that instantly I liked. Um, and as Nitro started coming out and with Raw, and you saw, you saw more of Sting. And then when Hogan and Macho Man went over to WCW, I definitely started paying more attention to WCW. But... I saw some of Sting's early stuff even before that, but really, right around the time when Hogan and Macho Man came around, that's really when I was following WCW a lot, you know, clo more closely than I had before. So, you know, when it came to Bash at the Beach, uh, '96, and you had the Outsiders coming in and 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 Sting get, and, and being involved in that match with with Macho Man and Lex Luger, and um, you know, losing to the outsiders and the now bad guy Hulk Hogan. It affected me. It affected me deeply uh, as a kid. I was like, I can't believe Hogan's bad. I, I never expected that. And I didn't know what to think. And, you know, a lot of us didn't know what to think at the time. Um, but I would have never have expected Sting to turn into this whole, like, you know, crow gimmick. Him lurking in the shadows. And it was the coolest thing ever. But... I figured since there's so much about that right now, there's so much being talked about, you know, Sting from that era, I figured I'd pay tribute to the classic Sting, the Stinger I grew up with, you know, um, too bad Vader's not in this game, because that would be really cool to do some Vader and Ric Flair matches. Actually, Ric Flair should have been in this game. He was in WCW NWO World Tour, and the reason why he wasn't in Revenge was because um, it was basically like legal issues at the time. He no-showed a WCW event. And so basically Bischoff, you know, was trying to fire him and get rid of him and sue him. And Rick, uh, Ric Flair was claiming um, that they owed him a lot of back pay already, which is why he no-showed. So they were involved in contract dispute. Now, um, WCW uh, versus NWO World Tour was the first AKI-developed wrestling game. And, you know, Ric Flair was in that game, as was um, Steven Regal, which is interesting. But, um, you know, he could have very well have been in uh, WCW versus NWO Revenge. Uh, but for whatever, because of, I'm assuming, the legal issues, he wasn't. So it's unfortunate because I could have done some really cool Sting Ric Flair matches. And he actually would come back. Ric Flair would come back shortly before uh, Revenge got released. He would come back to... Um, WCW TV, but I think it was too late by that point because you know a video game is usually done like a month or so before it gets released You know, they're just you know working in crunch and stuff like that So they probably didn't have the time to squeeze him back in. I'm sure he was probably part of the original roster, but Because of all that legal stuff. They probably just took him out of it because they weren't able to use his likeness um, because him and you know, Eric Bischoff were engaged in a lawsuit, but eventually Ric Flair came back. So, no Sting Ric Flair epic encounters in this run, but I'm having a really long one with um, Raven and Sting and trying to make them tap. You know, WCW and NW Revenge, you're going to see a lot of matches go longer than, um, you know, my No Mercy matches. 
Uh, I talked about this in my virtual pro wrestling videos. I, you know, I do, and I mentioned earlier, I do think it's a little broken with the AI. That doesn't mean it's like unplayable. Uh, it's still a very fun game, even when you're playing on the hard difficulty. It just it just keeps you aware. Like it just makes you more aware of what you're doing. I do play a little bit more conservatively when I um, play Revenge because I don't want to let let the computer get too much momentum on me because it really sucks doing the championship paths. You don't get any retries. So if you're winning, you're winning, you're winning, and then you get to like the second to last match or the third to last match, and all of a sudden you lose. You gotta start all the way back from the beginning. I don't like starting all the way back from the beginning. Especially when I'm recording this now for a, uh, a Let's Play. It's like I'm spending at least 45 minutes to an hour on these championship runs. I don't want to start all over again. <laughs> and you'll see later on, there'll be one match. I'm not gonna say which one, we'll get to it. But there's one match where I almost lose and it... My heart almost stopped because <laughs> it was so it was so nerve-wracking. I did I didn't want to lose at that moment. But here I go. I'm going back for the Scorpion Deathlock. Um, I think I remember when I first did the Sting uh, playthrough. Someone asked me why did I keep using you know the um, Scorpion Deathlock to win the matches, and I was like, well, it's it's it was his finisher. It was <laughs> he had that, and he had the Scorpion Death Drop, which was the reverse DDT. Uh, I don't think people, a lot of people, you know, especially if you didn't watch WCW um, and you, you weren't really familiar with Sting, I don't think people realize that he was one of the first people to use the sharpshooter. Um, the sharpshooter was actually created by a Japanese wrestler called Riki Chosu. Uh, Riki Chosu, a, um, a New Japan, you know, pro wrestling legend. Uh, he's actually in Virtual Pro Wrestling too, so I'll probably do a whole, you know, series on uh, Ricky Chosu in, in my Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 series. But, um, you know, Bret Hart, I think, is probably the one most associated with the sharpshooter. But Sting used to do it too, Sting so used to do it all the time. Um, and then he also had the reverse DDT, you know, so he had two finishers technically. And he was doing those, you know, when he became the Crow gimmick, he did the reverse DDT a lot more. You know, that, that became his go-to. Um, but, you know, he used to do it a little bit back then, even as a stinger. But his more go-to was the Scorpion uh, Deathlock. I think it was because, you know, yeah, he was a powerhouse. But then he was involved with, like, all these technical matches with, like, Ric Flair and, and Steamboat and stuff like that. So, Sting was a very versatile wrestler. That's why I liked him, because... You know, he was a big dude. He didn't seem like a big dude because he was so agile. But he's like, you know, he's over six foot. Very strong. Very muscular. You know, so he's able to lift guys up like Vader. He's like surprisingly strong. Um, but at the same time, he can fly out the ring. Or he can get very, you know, technical. Like do a lot of technical mat wrestling. Um, you know, he's, a, he's just an all-around great wrestler. Um, you know, it's legendary now that he never made the jump from WCW until recently. But, you know, he, he started out working at WCW back when it was called Jim Crockett Promotions. So this was like back in 1987. Oh, my goodness. To put that in context, I was born in 86. Okay, so, you know, I'm old. Sting's old. We're all old. <laughs> Booker T. Booker T's old. Taking on Booker T in his Harlem Heat gear. I'm going to... I'm. You know, I have to mention, you know, Booker T, I loved Harlem Heat growing up, and Booker T definitely was one of my favorite wrestlers ever, but for some reason, my Kevin Nash and Scott Hall, you know, the Outsiders uh, tag team playthrough is my most watched video on YouTube. Uh, I don't know why that is. Uh, a part of me just left it's the only tag team playthrough i've done i'm guessing it's because it's the outsiders which is but you know tag team runs take a long time to do especially in um wcw nwo revenge so part of the reason why i haven't done another tag team run is because they take forever but it, on, another part of it is you know i kind of like them having their own you know little tag team mat uh, championship run and being the most viewed video on my channel but I do have to say, their reign is going to come to an end soon because one of the first Let's Plays I do in the tag team division, I think I'm just going to do the Harlem, I'm Harlem Heat. So, you know, Booker T in his Harlem Heat gear, you'll see more of him soon. Uh, so, yeah, so, all right, let's get back to Sting. Let's talk about Sting as the U.S. heavyweight champion. 
because people probably don't even remember him being the US, U.S. heavyweight champion, and that's understandable because he actually didn't hold it for too long. Um, you know, he was the WCW World Heavyweight Champion six times, okay? But he was only the United States Heavyweight Championship twice. Uh, he only held it twice, I should say. Uh, he was also a WCW uh, Tag Team Champion three times. Now, he would hold the Tag Team title after holding, um, you know, the World Heavyweight title and the United States Heavyweight title. So, he was also, Sting was also a WCW International Heavyweight Champion two times. Um, and if you don't know what that title is, uh, that was technically the title they created after WCW, you know, split from the NWA and they no longer were using the NWA World Heavyweight Championship, which Sting was NWA World Heavyweight Champion two times. He was also the NWA TV Champion one time. Now, it's, it's, very, it's very confusing. I'll try not to talk too much about it, but so that you had the NWA and you had Jim Crockett Promotions. Jim Crockett Promotions worked with the NWA uh, eventually, they wanted to split from the NWA and call themselves WCW. Um, and, you know, they, they still worked with NWA for a little bit while they were called the WCW, but then eventually they split completely from the NWA. But, you know, when you had the NWA, when you were part of the NWA, you usually shared titles. I mean, the NWA World Heavyweight title was the big one, went around the whole country. But, you know, if the NWA World Heavyweight Champion wasn't around, you would have your own titles. So... A lot of the times, what a lot of promotions would do, they would create titles and call them NWA titles, but they weren't actually part of the NWA, they were part of that promotion. Perfect example is the NWA World Television Championship, because that NWA World Ta Championship that was specifically defended at Jim Crockett Promotions belonged to WCW, and when they split from the NWA, they named it the regular WCW TV title champion, so technically, if you look at the history of the WCW TV title championship, uh, Sting was the TV title champion. So if you're adding it all up and you don't count the Cruiserweight title, Sting was a, you know, a Grand Slam champion. You know, take that, Shawn Michaels. <laughs> um, you know, he was one of the first few, few uh, I, think, I don't think there were many WCW Grand Slam champions, but Sting was one of them. Um, so the NWA World Heavyweight Championship... Uh, and I'll talk about this in another video uh, more extensively, but basically when they split from the NWA World Championship, so they still had the WCW World Championship, but then they created the WCW International World Heavyweight Championship in lieu of the he NWA Heavyweight Championship. Uh, you know, because the NWA title was a title that was defended all over the country and all over the world, so in order to keep that flavor going, they, they had the International World Heavyweight Championship, and eventually they would merge them, and then you'd have the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. So what's the point of me talking about all this? The point of me talking about all this is that Sting held them all, baby. <laughs> Sting, the icon, the franchise, he held all the type, top titles in the NWA, in WCW. I mean, he rightly so was the man. I mean, PWI wrestler of 1990, PWI match of the year 91 him and Luger against the Steiner brothers. He was ranked at number one in PWI Which not a lot of wrestlers have been ranked number one. He was ranked number one in the PWI 500 in 1992 uh, Also made a lot of the top 10 top 15 PWI rankings um, And after WCW folded he went to TNA and he was the TNA world heavyweight champion there four times he was a tag champion there one time with Kurt Angle uh, WWF No Mercy alumni uh, <laughs> you know the Wrestling Observer gave several five star matches with Sting involved in them um, you know two of them one in 1991 which was like a five a four man uh, no an eight man tag team at war games and then in 92 another eight man uh, tag team at war games um, and also 1998 one of his many clashes with Ric Flair at Clash of the Champions uh, match of the year. I mean, this guy, definitely in the 90s and 80s, a big, big star. And then to revitalize his career when he went through the Crow gimmick. And then to go to TNA 
and keep his career going even though WWE would have you believe he disappeared for 14 years which I'll talk about later um, and then to come back now and to have fans recently at Raw chanting and cheering for him and losing you know their mind when he comes out I mean Sting Sting is no doubt one of the best um, there's just no denying it and I recommend you know if you don't have the WWE Network I talk about the WWE Network in my No Mercy videos and I talk about it a lot uh, get the WWE Network even if you're just a fan of wrestling I know some people are like oh but I don't want to support WWE like what, whatever okay whatever I'm not gonna force you to spend your money however you, you want to do it but I know as a longtime wrestling fan I haven't seen everything I've forgotten about a lot of things and doing these videos um, the WWE Network has been a great resource because I've been able to watch a lot of these classic matches that I might not be as familiar with because A, I saw them as I was a kid, so I had a different, you know, idea of what wrestling was. Uh, B, never saw them because A, you know, I, I just didn't see everything. Or C, never knew some of these things existed. I don't remember, I honestly don't remember Sting's US Heavyweight title run. Um, and it was it was actually the first major WCW title he held, if we're not counting, you know, the NWA TV title and the NWA World Heavyweight title. Uh, he held both of those titles before he became the WCW US Heavyweight Champion, but um, that's technically the first WCW belt he had, you know, when it was called a WCW title. Now, he beat, you might, you might recognize this name, he beat Steve Austin in a tournament final at a house show. That's right, Steve Austin. Stone, imagine Stone Cold Steve Austin and Sting in the same ring together. Well, you can watch it on the WWE Network. They don't have that show. They don't have that show, uh, that match. You know, it was just a house show, but uh, you know, the title was vacated because Lex Luger had won the, the world title. So they vacated the title and Sting, you know, uh, you know, one of the top guys in the company at that time, he was involved in this tournament and stunning Steve Austin, you know, they fought and um, I'm pretty sure the match was great. <laughs> um, this was on August 25th, 1991. Maybe it might be on YouTube, who knows? It might be on YouTube, but um, that's when Sting first won the U.S. heavyweight title. Um, unfortunately, Sting's run as U.S. heavyweight champion, you know, I talked about this during the WWF No Mercy Let's Play series with like some guys like Matt Hardy, you know, when he was the European champion. Uh, unfortunately, when you get a title, it doesn't always mean, you know, success and greatness as a champion. Sometimes you're just a transitional champion. Sometimes you're given the belt, but nothing really happens when you have a belt. I mean, most recently, you know, look at Ambrose, Dean Ambrose. He was the U.S. heavyweight champion before Rusev, and he did nothing with it. He just held the title, and it kind of became a thing, like, towards the end, before he lost the title. It was like, what are you doing with the U.S. heavyweight title? They're like, have I even, you know, have you even defended it recently? And, like, <laughs> it became a thing how he was the U.S. heavyweight champion, but there wasn't really any big storylines or any angles where people were really going after that U.S. heavyweight title. He just kind of had it. Um, you know, Rusev, on the other hand, his reign is definitely a lot more uh, memorable, you know, with him being the U.S. champion. So, and that's the same U.S. heavyweight title we're talking about. We're still, we're talking about the same title that Sting won, okay, back in, um, you know, 1991. It, that's the same U.S. heavyweight title. I mean, obviously, it's not the same, same title, but... Um, that, that's how far back the lineage goes. It, it goes even further back than that. So it's nuts to think that. Um, that Sting held that title, you know, that Rusev is carrying, you know, back in 1991. Uh, but if you go, if you go on the WWE Network, you, it, you're going to be hard-pressed to find uh, a Sting match where he actually defends his U.S. Heavyweight title. Um, I only found one. Uh, I didn't search through the Nitros. Uh, but actually, no, this was before the Nitros they have, actually. No, wait, no, they have the 95 and 96 Nitros. So, who knows? Maybe he did defend the U.S. title on some of those episodes of Nitros. I actually didn't check. I should have checked, but I didn't. There's just so many of them to go through. So, what I do is I go by the pay-per-views to see, like, you know, what they were doing 
um, on the pay-per-views while they were champion. So, so Sting, you know, if you go, you watch um, Clash Clash of the Champions. What is that? 16. You know, it's quote unquote fall brawl, September 5th, 1991. He takes on Johnny B. Bad, uh, aka Mark Merrow, and um, as a U.S. Heavyweight Champion. Then you know he would he would only hold the title for uh, 86 days in his first run as champion, because he would lose it to Rick Rude on November 19th, 1991, at Clash of the Champions uh, 7. Rick Rude was so over in uh, NWA and you know WCW, you know multi-time NWA champion, uh, U.S. Heavyweight champion. Uh, this dude was so over back then. Um, and even when he was in the WWF, where he was ravishing Rick Rude, he was pretty over with his feuds with Ultimate Warrior. But um, this was really cool because this is why I love the WWE Network. Because, you know, I was aware of the Dangerous Alliance as a kid. Um, actually, when I used to watch ECW, I didn't really recognize... Because, again, you watch it as a kid, so some of the things don't stick. I didn't recognize that Paul Heyman was Paul E. Dangerously. Like, my friend had to point it out. It's like, you know that's Paul E. Dangerously, right? I'm like, what? Yeah, Paul Heyman. That's Paul E. Dangerously. You know, the guy with the big phone? It's like, no. It was? Like, and this wasn't even, like, that far apart. <laughs> but, you know, when you're a kid, you see things differently. You know, they don't really register until you get older. You know, I'm pretty sure, like, you know, when you're watching a movie and then you realize, like, an actor in the movie is, like, an actor that was in a movie you watched as a kid. Like, it doesn't click that it's the same person. You know, so that's how I was like, oh, Paul E. That's Paul E. Dangerously? And same thing with Steve Austin. Like, my friend had to point out, like, don't you remember Steve Austin? He was the Hollywood Blondes, this and that. I was like, oh, yeah, now I remember him. So, uh, wrestling's funny that way. If you're a kid, you know, you look at things differently when you're a kid, but... Um, yeah, so this match, the Clash Clash of the Champions 7, which was Rick Rude and Sting. Uh, so Sting was supposed to face Rick Rude, and Rick Rude actually just came back to WCW because he was in the WWF as Ravishing Rick Rude, and he left. Then he came back, and he came back, and now he's being managed by Paulie Dangerously. And, um, you know, at the beginning of the um, Clash of the Champions event, uh, Larry Sabisco and Arn Anderson, I, f I believe they were like attacking people. Um, and then um, St uh, Sting got attacked by Lex Luger. So he had to be, you know, rushed to the hospital. Remember, this is wrestling. He was rushed to the hospital. And Paul E. Dangerously was going to like use a loophole to say that if Sting didn't show up to defend the title, that would automatically make Rick Rude the champion. Sting comes hobbling back. Or, you know, he made his way back from the hospital. Um, but, you know, he's still working the leg. Still working the leg. He got hurt by... He got attacked by Luger. And Rick Rude would, would, would beat him. Um, so he would lose his U.S. heavyweight title. Um, this was the beginning of the Dangerous Alliance. Uh, in WCW, I should say. Because Paul Heyman did do the Dangerous Alliance in AWA before that. But I don't have to get into that. But, you know, Paul Heyman... The advocate, you know, Rick Rude was his, was a Paul Heyman guy. He was a Paul E. Dangerously guy, <laughs> if you will. But, you know, he had the whole uh, Dangerous Alliance stable. They they formed the next night on Nitro. And it was it was, it was was uh, Rick Rude, Larry Sabisco, who just got inducted to the Hall of Fame. Arn Anderson, who's already in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Bobby Eaton. Medusa, who's getting inducted into the Hall of Fame this year, and Steve Austin. There's that name again, Steve Austin. Um, and this would be this would actually begin Rick Rude's um, historic U.S. Heavyweight Championship run, where he would hold it for 419 days. 419 days, Rick Rude would be champion, uh, which is which is nuts. And he actually never lost it. He would vacate the title. Uh, when he when he would get injured now sting and rick rude have a lot of history together the reason why i'm talking about this not just because to allude to you know paul Heyman being the wwe these days but sting and rick rude actually have a lot of history because um later on they would meet in japan and um they would have a match uh while fighting for the the uh the u.s heavyweight title i believe and 
Sting would do a uh, like would would knock Rick Rude out to the ring or something like that. All I know is that there was like there was something outside of the ring that he landed on awkwardly and he hurt his back and that really messed up his back. So Rick Rude had to retire. Um, unfortunately, Rick Rude isn't in this game as a wrestler. But what's really interesting is that he's a manager in this game. Um, and who does he come out with? Ah, oh, shoot. I gotta look that up real quick because when you play just the regular exhibition matches, some of the wrestlers they come out with managers. Um, you know, most notably, you know, Hogan will come out with Eric Bischoff, uh, Diamond Dallas Page. He'll come out with Kimberly. They don't come out with them when you're doing the championship paths, which is really interesting. You know, if you're just doing a regular championship run, they they won't come out. But if you do an exhibition you'll see them come out so oh Rick Rude comes out with Kurt Henning oh that makes sense because at the time of this game Rick Rude was rolling with Kurt Henning uh, and I think Rick, yeah because you know they were both part of the NWL so but Rick Rude was retired by the time this game came out I always wondered why this game didn't have a legends section um, you know I, they didn't really include that to no mercy technically uh, in this game, you have a bunch of uh, fake wrestlers, quote unquote, fake wrestlers, you know, taking up like the last two stables. Those wrestlers are actually based off of Japanese wrestlers like Mitsuhiro Masawa, uh, Kenta Kobashi, you know, a lot of famous uh, and at the time very current Japanese wrestlers. You know, they're famous these days, but they were some of the most popular wrestlers in Japan at the time. Uh, I don't know why they decided to go that route and instead not include like you know other WCW wrestlers because they could have included Rick Rude as as a wrestler you know he could have he could have been a hidden wrestler Dusty Rhodes is another person that's in this game as a manager it's like Dusty Rhodes had such a history with WCW like why not just include him as a wrestler like make a whole uh, legends division um, maybe that was one of the way they could have used Ric Flair's likeness I don't know I didn't develop this game, uh, but it, w it would have been interesting to find out why they didn't go that route or why they went the route of using fake wrestlers that were really Japanese wrestlers. Like, I know, I mean, it seemed like they wanted to add more wrestlers to the game. Maybe they couldn't. Maybe they couldn't get the likeness for a lot of the legendary wrestlers. Uh, but that would have been neat. Like, maybe you know, maybe they could have somehow worked something out and got Vader, you know, or Ron Simmons. Uh, well, they probably wouldn't have been able to get Ron Simmons or Vader, actually, now that I think of it, because they were probably with WWF. Uh, you know, maybe Ricky Steamboat? I don't think I don't think Steamboat was with WWF at the time this game came out. They could have had Steamboat in this game. That would have been really cool. I just don't understand why Rick Rude wasn't playable. Um, you know, it would have been interesting to have Rick Rude in this game. I was a fan of Rick Rude. But yeah, Sting, Sting um, was involved in the match that ended Rick Rude's career. Um, so they have some history over the U.S. heavyweight title. That feud would go on briefly. Uh, they would keep going. Uh, eventually, um, Sting would transition to feuding with um, Lex Luger for the um, world heavyweight title. And he would beat Lex Luger for the world he heavyweight title three months after losing the U.S. heavyweight title. So again, his, his, his first U.S. heavyweight run, I guess you can mark it being as him losing it was the jumping point for Paulie Dangerously's um, Dangerous Alliance being formed. Um, so let's flash forward to 1995. Uh, the U.S. heavyweight title is vacated again. And this time it's vacated um, because Vader was being a jerk. <laughs> I think he attacked someone so they stripped him of the title. And um, so Sting won another tournament because that's what he does. He wins tournaments. And um, he would beat... Meng. So he beat Meng to win his second uh, U.S. heavyweight title. Uh, so I thought that was very interesting. The both times that Sting won the U.S. heavyweight title was because of tournaments. He won tournaments. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, by this time, he was already the WCW International Champion twice and the um, WCW World Heavyweight Title Champion twice. So he didn't really need to win the U.S. heavyweight championship. But this was 1995. So you gotta think, okay, now Hogan's in the WW, um, WCW, Macho Man's in WCW, a lot more WWF guys are there. And definitely when they brought Hogan over to WCW, they were really pushing it as he was gonna be the top guy in the company. 
Um, the WWE Network has a series called Monday Night War. And it's something I didn't quite think about really until recently. Um, but yeah, by bringing in over Hogan and Macho Man, well, you know, now Sting, the top guy, has to kind of play, you know, he has to kind of be in the background for, for Hogan. Um, you know, and Hogan had a monstrous run as the WCW World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, and this man right here, the Giant, aka the Big Show, as we all know, like he would have a feud with Hogan. You know, he would come in and beat Hogan for the world title, and then they would go back and forth. But, you know, all the meanwhile, Sting is like, all right, I guess I'll just win the U.S. heavyweight title, I guess. <laughs> and, and again, it's just the kind of thing, well, he wins the U.S. heavyweight title, so let's go. Okay, so he won it at Bash at the Beach 95, and we go to Fall Brawl 95, and Sting is, he's in the main event, but he's teaming with the Hulkamaniacs. It's Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage, Lex Luger, and Sting. And they take on the Dungeon of Doom, Kamala, uh, Zodiac, the Shark, and Meng. Uh, you know, all led by the Taskmaster in a War Games match. And uh, yeah, don't don't watch that. <laughs> don't watch that match. Oh man, it's so bad. It's so bad. Um, which is interesting because Sting was involved in two two five star matches given by the Wrestling Observer at War Games uh, back in 1991, 1992, you know, that I mentioned earlier on. They were given five stars, and I would give the War Games 95 match zero stars. And that's, that's definitely an example of when you're watching wrestling as a kid, you watch it through a different lens. Because I remember, I remember going to school the next day after that pay-per-view and talking about what went down. Talking about, oh man, did you see them? They were all dressed up in face paint. They were united. They were like in the military. And my dad was all into it because, you know, he, my dad was in the Army Reserve. So he was all into it. Like, yeah, look at Hogan. He's got the face paint. Like, and, and, and Sting had face paint, but nothing was different because he always wore stay, face paint. But I went back and I watched it on the network. I, didn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't go through the whole thing. I just couldn't. Uh, and it was just so, so tough to watch. <laughs> Definitely one of those things where like I used to love that as a kid. Like that's what I love. You know, I love the I love Hulk Hogan and, and Randy Savage and the whole gimmick, you know, them going after Dungeon of Doom. Now I'm watching it, I'm like, you know, Zodiac was Brutus Beefcake? <laughs> you know, Shark was Earthquake? Like what's what's going on? Why is Kamala there? <laughs> Kamala's also in virtual pro wrestling too, which is interesting. Um yeah, Kevin Sullivan. Kevin Sullivan's Taskmaster was a riot, man. Oh man, watching like the promo for that, where he's like in the cage and just it's oh, it's an acid trip. That's what it is. I've never taken acid, but I would imagine that promo that Kevin Sullivan cuts is as close to being on acid you can get without actually taking it. Uh, that's just my opinion. Um, I'm sure someone who's been on acid can watch it and back me up on that. <laughs> But yeah, don't go watch that. But but at this time, um, Sting was the U.S. Heavyweight Champion, and and I was kind of confused. I was like looking at the dates. I was like, all right, he had to have been U.S. Heavyweight Champion, but why doesn't it say like in the recap that he's a? So I had to watch it to verify, and he's not even holding the title. You know, here he is, Fall Brawl '95. You know, uh, a few months later after winning the U.S. Heavyweight Championship, and he's not even wearing it to the ring, which I thought was interesting. But they announce him as the U.S. Heavyweight Champion when he goes to the match. So, uh, so anyway, Halloween Havoc '95. Once again, Sting. He's still the U.S. Heavyweight Champion, but uh, he doesn't defend his title at the pay-per-view. Instead, he teams up with Ric Flair, and they take on uh, Brian Pillman and Arn Anderson. Uh, this was like during the whole like you know semi reformation of the um, four horsemen and 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 Ric Flair would actually end up you know their alliance wouldn't last too long because Ric Flair um, and Sting would split uh, but at least this this title run would last a lot long a little bit longer than his first title run he would hold the title for 148 days before losing it to Kenzuki Sasaki. AKA the Power Warrior and I was shocked. I was I didn't even I did not know Kenzuki Sasaki was US heavyweight champion at one point, especially that he defeated Sting in a uh, house show in Tokyo at a New Japan event. 
Um, it's crazy to me. And I, I couldn't believe it. I was because you know I, I I became aware of Kenzuki Sasaki actually you know when I started getting really into virtual pro wrestling too, and I started getting into Japanese wrestling, and I started watching New Japan, and I would see Kenzuki Sasaki take on you know Shinya Hajimoto and Keje Mudo and Master Chono and all those guys, and um, you know he would team up with Man Manabu Nakanishi, um, but. Kenzuki Suzaki, I was like, wow, I had no idea. And, you know, funny enough, even though Sting might not have a lot of pay per view defenses as the U.S. Heavyweight Champion, you could actually watch one of Kenzuki Suzaki's U.S. Heavyweight title defenses because he didn't hold the title long, but he did take on Chris Benoit uh, for the U.S. Heavyweight title at World War III 95. So, you know, uh, shortly after beating Sting. And who Sting, let's look at his two pay-per-view title defenses. He took on Johnny B. Bad, and he took on Meng to win it. So, you know, that's that. <laughs> but Kenzuki Kenzu Sasaki and Benoit have a match for the U.S. Heavyweight title at World War Three. So, you know, poor Sting. You know, again, but I mean, not really poor Sting. Like, the guy, one of the most popular wrestlers ever. You can't feel bad for him. There's Conan kicking out. Conan actually taught, you know, legend has it that Conan taught the sharpshooter to Bret Hart. Uh, Conan's and that, you know, Conan's been around forever. Um, another old guy. We're all getting old, guys. I don't mean it in a bad way. We're just, you know, Sting, Conan. We're, we're just getting old. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Sting, man. Sting's looking good, man. Sting came out on Raw the other night, attacked the Authority. So I guess you know. So that's that's Sting's U.S. Heavyweight Title run in a nutshell. Nothing too crazy, but you know, again, I wanted to do this run because I wanted to highlight while you're watching some epic clashes going on. While I'm about to take a big diving plancha, barely hitting Conan, he rolls out the way, which was impressive. Um, you know, I want to talk about Sting and the WWE. Sting finally, finally. After all these years being in, in TNA, even though WWF would have you believe he was doing nothing for 14 years, he disappeared. Um, you know, it's a it's a weird mixture of feelings. Because on the one hand, I'm very excited. You know, finally we get to see Sting. Uh, even though it's you know 15 years late, in my opinion, we finally get to see him. He gets to have his WrestleMania moment, and that's great. Um, on the one hand, I know this is going to be short-lived. Uh, you got to be thinking that he only has maybe one or two more WrestleManias after this. You know what I mean? Like, I don't see this going on for too much longer. It would be great if we, you know, if I could peer into my crystal ball and see that down the line, Sting becomes maybe like a um, on-TV personality. Uh, like, you know, Ric Flair, when Ric Flair assumed that role. Or even when Shawn Michaels assumed that role, or Triple H now has that role, uh, I would love to see Sting become like you know one of the um, you know office authority figures. Maybe he becomes like the new GM or commissioner or something like that. Like that would be cool because Sting is such a great personality. Um, you can't help but love him. Um, so I'm excited that he's in the WWE because you know it brings back. A lot of the great feelings of when he, you know, did the whole Crow gimmick and fought the NWO. But then on the other hand, I don't like how they're making it about, you know, the feud between Triple H and Sting is about, you know, Sting being the last nail in the coffin of WCW that just keeps sticking out. And Triple H is going to bury it. He's going to pound that nail into the coffin and burn the coffin and get rid of it. And, um, you know, screw Sting and screw WCW. It's like, we all know WWF won the Monday Night War. We all know that it wasn't completely just because WWF had the better product. WCW had horrible, horrible people um, running that company. And it was only a matter of time before... Uh, WCW ran itself in the ground even if they weren't running opposite WWF I mean just the stuff they were doing was just awful 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 some of the storylines and you know and really Sting being you know the whole Crow gimmick that whole run 
was probably one of like the last great thing that WCW did. There wasn't too much after that, you know, even when Bret Hart was there, you know, around that time and you know, it just just wasn't there just wasn't anything there after that. After that big feud which they kind of messed up when it happened. Um they they didn't know what to do next and um you know they didn't focus on new talent they focused on a lot of older talent and the fans didn't want it anymore and instead of like you know seeing what WWF was doing it's like all right well they're letting a lot of these young guys grab the mic and and speak their mind and really you know develop their characters they they try to imitate all the surfacey stuff that you know WWF was doing but they just weren't good at it just they were trying to be WWF light um, and it just wasn't working and then with Big Shoff and and Vince Russo coming in late in the game you know they were just all one trick ponies so unfortunately that's become the basis of the, of the Sting Triple H feud I think this whole thing could have gone down as Sting coming in to just wrestle Triple H for his WrestleMania moment like that's it like Sting hasn't said a word Triple H has done all the talking about how I was around, you know, we buried WCW, I was there, me, 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 even though it was really Stone Cold and The Rock, you know, <laughs> you know, it wasn't really Triple H, Triple H, what, Triple H would become the top guy after WCW was long gone, um, but, you know, I, I felt like it's a little unnecessary also. It's it's weird because okay if you think about that if if, if WCW you know was the quote unquote enemy right so as a WWE fan you gotta be like yeah WCW was the enemy and we won so you're not supposed to cheer for Sting right and you know if if that's if that's the direction we're gonna go and it's like no wrestling fans aren't stupid they're gonna cheer for Sting so let them cheer for Sting. I would have just liked to see how if Triple H was just being haunted by Sting, you know what I mean? Like just a random crow in the background here and there, like very subtle hints throughout the year and you know Sting showing up and Sting being the vigilante not because he was with WCW but because you know that's what he does, he 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 comes in and he destroys evil factions. He he helped destroy the NWO. He helped topple Hulk Hogan. Triple H right now with the authority, I mean Triple H has always been a part of a faction where it's always about power and greed. And now, if anything, it's at its worst, you know, point with Triple H because he's he's basically going to take over the company when when Vince McMahon is, is gone, you know, him and, and Steph, they're, you know, they're going to take over the company and to exert his power in an, in in a evil way um then sting shows up sting is like kind of like godzilla <laughs> i know that might sound like a weird association but you know godzilla he might seem like this like crazy monster that's out to destroy everyone but really he's there to stop the other evil monster that's gonna really destroy the earth um you know that's who Sting is. Sting comes in. He's got the face paint. He's all black. The the crows, symbols of death. You know, coming with the trench coat, the moody music. But he's actually the good guy. He's actually here to save us from the bad guys. He looks like he could be a bad guy, but he's here to save us. Um, they could have just neglected the whole WCW thing and just did the whole thing like Triple H calling him out. Like, I'm getting haunted by this thing. Who does this guy think he is? Where have you been the past 14 years? All of a sudden, you're coming here. Why? To challenge me? To challenge my power? You know, and then they could have just still done the whole bit where they, you know, Triple H pulled his sledgehammer out and Sting stopped him with the bat and pointed at WrestleMania and, then you, and you got it. Why make it about WCW? And the reason why it worries me that they're making it about WCW is like, well, who wins WrestleMania? Because I think everyone is expecting Sting to win. I don't think anyone wants Triple H to win. Not because, you know, they don't like Triple H, but we've all been waiting for Sting to be here. If you know who Sting is and you were a fan of Sting, 
you don't want to see Sting finally after 14 years. It's not like there's going to be another WCW guy or another guy from any promotion showing up in the WWE that hasn't already worked for WWE. Sting is like the last one. He's the only one. You know, Christopher Daniels is not going to get his WrestleMania moment. <laughs> you know, Shane Douglas is not going to come back and get his WrestleMania moment. Like, Sting is the only, you know, wrestler, on, you know, honestly, that matters that has come back. So, right here, real quick, this is it. So, me and Goldberg are outside, and this is the second to last match before the championship. And Goldberg will just not let up on me. He keeps attacking me. The count goes to 20 keep in mind so Goldberg put me in the arm bar and you're like okay Goldberg's gonna go back up right nope he just wants to punch me in the face a little bit <laughs> and I'm like freaking out I'm mashing away the buttons because we're at 18 the counts getting slower and then sting is getting up slow it's like what are you doing sting and oh my god I can't believe I made it back <laughs> I was gonna be so upset at Goldberg if he cost me to lose this championship match I don't, that was the closest I've ever been to being counted out at the second to last match ever. So for that, Goldberg gets two stinger splashes, but he's still fighting me. He still won't go down. Goldberg's actually pretty tough in this game. Not because he's Goldberg and they probably made him overpowered. I don't think they made him overpowered, but the jackhammer is one of the best finishers in this game because you can pull it off anywhere in the ring and never get a rope break because the way he wraps you up and he hooks your leg he always keeps you from ropes so it's it's a great finisher to have especially in this game where rope break is so you know prevalent because you, you, you can't really you don't have too much control over where you can land guys or drag them around um, like in the other games so you know, it, it, it's it's hard to get those pins when you gotta get them as fast as you can. Uh, luckily, I'm just gonna keep trying to make him submit. But uh, yeah, Goldberg Goldberg's tough because if you're fighting against him and his, you know, he's getting a comeback special, it's a dangerous position to be in because if he does hit you with that finisher, if he does hit you with the, with the jackhammer, you're gonna lose. So so it's a little it's a little scary sometimes facing Goldberg. But luckily. I was able to avoid that count out and then capitalize on my own comeback special and beat him. And, you know, we're going to be going into the final match now. We're going to be going up against Kurt Henning, um, you know, a.k.a. Mr. Perfect. I miss Kurt Henning, man. He was one of my favorite wrestlers, too. But, yeah, getting back to Sting at WrestleMania. So it's like, okay, I would like to believe that Sting and Triple H... In a perfect world, they're going to go in there and all of a sudden all that WCW, WWF, Monday Night War stuff is going to be tossed out the window and we're just going to see a great match. That's all I want to see. I want to see an old school, methodical match between Triple H and Sting. Triple H can still go. Sting can still go. I mean, yeah, you know, you look at some of his TNA stuff, but at the same time, you got to look at what, who he was working with. Um, you know, and that's not a knock on a lot of those TNA guys. Like, I'm not knocking TNA. I like a lot of the wrestlers. I'm just talking about certain matches that Sting was involved in in TNA. He wasn't really working with some guys who were working to the best of their ability. You know, I think the most infamous one is like the Jeff Hardy incident. Um, but, you know, Triple H, last year, him and Daniel Bryan had a classic match. And I was actually talking with a, a friend of mine about that match. That match was an old school match. That match was exactly fit the mode of, like, you know, 1991 era Sting and Ric Flair or, you know, Ricky Steamboat, even Steve Austin back then. Like, that's what it felt like, the Triple H-Daniel Bryan match. Um, and, it, and it was great. So... You know, Triple H is a student of the game. You know, he is the game. And I admire, I, I, I do I do appreciate a lot of his, his work that he's done over the years. So I know that on paper, him and Sting can have a great match. Now, the only thing that worries me is with this all this WCW, WWF, and authority bull crap that seems like it's going to plague a lot of the main events going into WrestleMania. I don't want to see J&J &J involved. 
I don't want to see Big Show involved. I don't want to see Kane involved. I don't want to see any of that stuff. You know, have them do their bits maybe with, you know, Triple H and then Sting with the bat and the sledgehammer. But keep everyone else out of it. I don't want to see any surprises. I don't want to see Hall and Nash show up. I don't want to see, I don't want to see DX show up. I don't want to see anything. I just want to see Sting and Triple H go toe to toe. And I want Sting to win. Like, like seriously, like if Sting doesn't win, uh, you know, I, I just don't know. I don't know how I would feel. Just thinking about that is just like, why would you build him up? Why would you, after 14 years, let him, you know, sign the contract, finally do the talks, give him his DVD, do all this stuff, so he loses? Like, I, I feel like, you know, take away the storyline, take away all that, like, Sting is is definitely an icon sting did so much for this business even though he didn't wrestle for the wwe um you know don't take that away from him like like and obviously sting would have to agree to it you know it's not like Sting's gonna lay down so me thinking sting being in the match to begin with is like okay sting is going over um but i don't know it's this is this is 2015 wwe anything can happen uh <laughs> Um, you know, this is an era where, you know, Roman Reigns wins the Royal Rumble, even though all the fans, you know, saw it coming and let WWE know that that's not what they wanted to see, and they did it anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know. This, this WrestleMania worries me. I'm going to do a lot of uh, Let's Play videos leading up to WrestleMania. This is technically, like, the first one. This is the first one. I'm talking about Sting. I'm talking about Triple H uh, and their match. You know how I feel. I want I want Sting to win. I want it to be a good match, but you know my reservations going into it is that Sting is gonna lose, and it's not gonna he's not gonna lose in the right way. He's it's gonna lose in a terrible way. Um, and what's the point? What's the point of that? Like, Sting is not gonna be on Raw every week wrestling. You know, this is a guy that you have to at this point keep him for special appearances. Um, I say he's got a few more WrestleManias left in him. You know, next year at WrestleMania, they got to fill up, you know, Cowboy Stadium, over 100,000 seats. You're going to want to believe they're going to be uh, trying to max that out. Uh, you better believe I just did a Four Corners Around the World uh, Stinger Splash. I almost got the fourth one off and it ended up being the big uh, Yakuza kick. Uh, but, you know, I've been trying, I was kind of trying to do that all run, do a Four Corners. Uh, stinger splash but can only get off three but whatever close enough uh, <laughs> but you better believe they're trying to fill that arena out and you know my big theory is that Stone Cold's gonna be a part of it uh, you could quote me on that now one year before and I've talked about this you know but I think Stone Cold is definitely gonna be there he's probably gonna wrestle he's most likely gonna wrestle I mean if you want to fill up that theater you better have Stone Cold wrestle in the heart of Texas uh, but I think Sting will probably face the undertaker there and maybe they'll have a career versus career match um i think because you know everyone wanted to see undertaker sting but i think i think it was too early for that i don't think we we should have gotten sting undertaker right away i think i think that could come later and i think maybe if you have the undertaker's retirement match you know why not have it with sting's last match uh, or maybe not. Maybe Sting, it won't be his last match. Maybe it'll be an opportunity for Sting to wrestle someone else and put that guy over. You know, they're, they're, they're teaming him up with Randy Orton right now. I don't know what long-term effects that'll have. Uh, maybe Randy Orton and Sting will have a match down the line. You know, there's some history there with the Ortons and Sting and all that stuff. Um, so who knows? I'm thinking long-term. I'm thinking what works more you know long term having sting win or having triple h win triple h doesn't need to win the authority does not need to look strong right now the authority will always be around as you know as 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 painful as it sounds when you have triple h and stephanie mcmahon there you're always going to have that authority element um and especially considering how the whole brock lesnar roman reigns situation might go down and seth rollins being the money in the bank holder um, they don't need to look strong in that match. The the Triple H, you know, Sting feud has been kind of separate from the world title picture. 
Um, so put Sting over, put Sting on top, and um, yeah, don't 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 make Sting lose, guys. Like I like I, it, it's just really I don't know. It's not smart. It's kind of like when Brock Lesnar came back, and he came back, and the first thing he did was lose to John Cena. We're supposed to forget about that all of a sudden, because now Brock Lesnar is strong, and you know Brock Lesnar, you know suplex John Cena out the main event. Yeah, two years later he did. <laughs> like I didn't forget. I didn't forget you coming back the day after WrestleMania, where Stone Cold and, and and Cena fought, and then you come back and you lose to John Cena, and then you and then you then you beat Triple H, and then you beat CM Punk, and then you lose to Triple H. You know, it's just like, I, it seems like a lot of short-term, you know, booking with that situation. And I hope they're not doing that with Sting and Triple H. Uh, because I just want them to go out there and have a great match. I do. You know, watching the WWE Network, watching a lot of the classic. I love those classic matches. You know, the pacing is a little bit slower. And definitely, you know, more of the modern viewer probably won't get it. But, you know, I grew up on that stuff. I'm a big fan of the strong style, the Japanese style. Like I appreciate when matches slow down. They don't have to always be high spots and you know ladders and tables and chairs. Oh my! Like they don't have to always be that stuff. They don't have, you know the wrestlers don't always have to be bouncing off the walls. You know every 10 seconds. I appreciate when there's a lot of psychology worked into the match where it gets basic and. Guys will work a body part for five minutes. Like I appreciate that, and I, I kind of want to see that. It's it's a lost art, and if anything, Triple H and Sting are the you know the best guys for that job. They're artists when it comes to working that style. I mean, you look at Sting, who was able to work with Ric Flair, and then turn around and work with a guy like Vader, and like put put on these great matches. Um, you know. It's, it's just something that you don't see these days, A, because, you know, they don't get to wrestle as long as they used to, but that's what I want to see, and I think, I think WrestleMania encompasses all that's great about wrestling, or at least all that's supposed to be great about WWE, and I'm, I'm not going to say all that's great about wrestling, because there's a lot of great wrestling beyond WWE that's going on these days, but... WrestleMania is definitely the biggest stage to showcase what can be great about wrestling. And usually they're good at that. Usually they're good at that in WrestleManias. But, you know, with the exception of last year, the WrestleManias before that haven't been doing that so well. I mean, there have been spots here and there. I mean, that's what was so great about the Undertaker matches. You had a lot of those moments. Um, so I hope Sting and Triple H have that moment. I hope it doesn't become some sort of weird, screwy finish. I hope they don't try to do any more surprises because just having Sting in a WWE event at WrestleMania, I mean, that's enough, right? Like, we never thought we would have get here. So. so there it is, my U.S. Heavyweight title run. I hope you enjoy it. Sting, the icon, rooting for him at WrestleMania. Just the first of many WCW NWO Revenge Let's Play uh, episodes coming up. I hope you liked it. If you did, click that like button. Subscribe so you know when my next video is up and running. Leave feedback. Tell me who you want to see up next. I got a few ideas, but you know, if I see any feedback from the fans of who they want to see, I'll probably go with those first. Uh, keep watching wrestling. Go watch some old Sting stuff on the WWE Network. A lot of great classic matches there, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.